I'm Jeff Jordan, President of PRB. Every year we publish our World Population Data Sheet, our annual report on the world's demographic, health, and environmental progress and challenges. In the next few minutes, you'll see some examples of incredible achievements over the last several decades. The proportion of people living in poverty has declined, infant mortality has dropped remarkably, and fewer mothers are dying in childbirth. But progress has been uneven. Pockets of high infant and maternal mortality persist with many countries, and there's still more than one billion people living in extreme poverty. Changing demographics suggest opportunities for further development. At the same time, we struggle to balance economic development with environmental impacts that in the long term could hamper, slow, or even reverse the gains made in improving people's well-being. This summer, the United Nations community is discussing the post-2015 development agenda a global framework for sustainable development and poverty eradication that will replace the Millennium Development Goals. We'll share results with you on a few of these. Let's get started. In much of the developing world, demographic change has contributed to economic growth and reductions in poverty. Over the last 40 years, women are having fewer children, from 4.7 children per woman in 1970 to an average of 2.5 children today. These population pyramids show the age structure of populations in 1970 and 2014. Look at the base of each pyramid. Forty years ago, the percentages of youth under 15 in most regions was very large. But today, because of lower fertility rates, the pyramids have changed shape, particularly in Asia and Latin America. While the total fertility rate has declined in many African countries, these declines have not yet been significant enough to substantially alter Africa's age structure. That said, with the right investments in health, education, and economic development, Africa should experience a similar decline in fertility rates and changes in age structure. On the other hand, many countries in Europe and a few countries in Asia are experiencing population aging. While wealth is generally much higher in these countries, they have more elderly, fewer workers, and increasing costs of health care pensions, and other safety net programs. World population is expected to rise from 7.2 billion today to 9.7 billion by 2050, and virtually all of this future growth will be concentrated in the world's less developed countries, especially in Africa. Since 1970, infant mortality has declined by more than 50 percent globally. Every region has experienced declines. In much of Africa, Asia, and Latin America, high rates have declined with unprecedented speed, due in large part to effective immunization programs. At the same time, infant mortality has continued to drop in the developed countries where rates were already low. High levels of infant mortality still persist in many countries, and in specific areas in other countries. Most of these deaths are preventable, and continued progress is still critical for the post-2015 development agenda. Where does the United States stand in this progress? Even with its low infant mortality rate of 5.4 infant deaths for every 1,000 live births, the U.S. has dropped in its overall ranking from 15th in 1970 to 48th today. One major reason U.S. rates have not fallen as rapidly as many other nations is much higher infant mortality rates among blacks than whites. The rate for blacks is over twice the rate for whites in the United States. Also critical to improving children's health is improving the health of their mothers. Between 1990 and 2013, deaths of women from pregnancy-related causes declined by almost 50 percent. Some countries have already met or are on target to meet the UN Millennium Development Goal No. 5 of reducing the number of maternal deaths by three-quarters between 1990 and 2015. Cambodia, Nepal, and Ethiopia are on target. Many countries, however, have made insufficient progress, and the maternal mortality ratio in developing countries is 14 times higher than in developed countries. A third of maternal deaths occur in just two large countries, Nigeria and India, and more progress is needed across much of Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia. The world has also made great improvements in reducing poverty. In 2010, five years ahead of the target date of 2015, the world reached Millennium Development Goal number 1 to cut in half the proportion of people living in extreme poverty or on less than $1.25 a day. Countries across Africa, Asia, and Latin America have seen poverty rates decline and today there are 700 million fewer people living in extreme poverty than there were in 1990. 
Look at the data sheets column on per capita gross national income to see the diversity in incomes across the world. One of the most difficult challenges we face is creating sustainable economic development to meet human needs without sacrificing our environment. Many indicators of our planet's health have continued to decline with little progress in reducing emissions and slowing climate change. Carbon emissions continue to increase for the world. Since 1990, global carbon emissions increased more than 50 percent. Emissions in the United States and other developed countries remain very high. The growth in emissions in China, as well as less developed countries, is particularly striking and has been one of the unfortunate consequences of the incredible economic and human development progress. Our efforts to improve health and reduce poverty could be undermined if development goals to improve lives today lack serious commitments to environmental sustainability for future generations. I encourage you to explore and share all the products that we've created this year to help you learn about world population. Our digital visualization, interactive map, interactive graphics, and of course the data sheet itself. And bookmark the world population data sheet because we will continue to launch new products including Twitter chats and webinars to keep you well informed.